We are going to learn a method to find the focal length of a concave mirror in the lab. This method is very accurate and uses very simple apparatus. What is the principle of this method? We know and we have learned that reflection takes place at any polished surface and also creates an image. This image is created on account of reflected rays meeting at a point. Such images we know are called real images. Should the image be formed after the rays are reflected from a mirror but appear to be coming from a point, that image is called virtual. Obviously, virtual images cannot be obtained on the screen, so our focus will only be on real images. What is the apparatus that we need? We need an optical bench, we need uprights and of course the mirror for which we are finding out the focal length. Let us understand its principle. What we, are going, we have over here is a concave mirror. We can place it on one of the uprights and let us say this is my object which I am showing by a green crayon. The image location or how to locate the image formed of the green crayon in the mirror over here which will be anywhere in this region we use this blue crayon in order to find that so what we are doing is placing this somewhere here and locating the image of this which will be inverted and formed anywhere here using the second crayon we remove parallax between the image of the green one and the blue crayon itself. This in effect is the principle of finding different values for U and corresponding values for V. V is the distance from the mirror, pole of the mirror to this image. And what is U? U is the distance from the mirror to the object. So U and V. Always remember the sign convention and let us do the experiment with actual pins which would give us a more accurate removal of parallax because they are sharp. So I am replacing this here by two sharp pins. We will have to adjust the height so that it is all on the same level something like this. the second pin, our image locator pin. Now because both the pins are looking the same, it is difficult to find out which image we are looking for. Why is this confusion going to be there? Because there will be image of this pin and the image of this pin. Was it not formed with the crayons? Yes, it was. There was an image of the green crayon and the image of the blue crayon. But what we did for finding out the image position was that we con considered only the image of the green crayon and the blue crayon itself. So this particular object pin or the pin which is acting as the object, we are going to make it identifiable. So for that, you can put a small paper rider on it. Take a small piece of paper and place it on top of this pin. So now we have made them different. If you don't wish to do that, you can paint one of them of another color. So one could be a red pin and the other could be a blue pin. That could also be a possibility. However, now what we are going to do is use this pin with the rider or with this paper. Look for its image along here. Its image would be inverted but the rider would be there as well. And we will remove parallax between that image and our image locator pin. So let's do the experiment. And uh, we need to find first the rough focal length of this. You will focus a distant object on a screen. And that value comes out to be for this particular mirror to be equal to 25 centimeters. So we make note of that. Having placed the pins on the upright, we need to check out for index error 
and correction and so you will use a pencil which is sharp at both ends place it at the center of the mirror and place our pin close to it like this note note down the reading as z of from the scale find the value of this length from the scale itself and see if there is any difference that difference will account for whether the uprights are vertical inclined inwards or outwards what observation table should we make position of the mirror would be one column position of the object pin position of the image pin thereafter if you subtract these distances find the difference of this distance from here to here these positions will give me object distance and this difference or this separation will give me image distance okay so this value as you can see is placed on 0 and this value is uh 40 and i try and remove parallax and locate this position repeat the experiment by changing this location to say 45 and you will have to find the new position for using the image locator pin and get this value slight alignment if there is slight alignment difference you can always adjust it by raising or lowering the uh, pins that is why you have all these screws attached you can give it displacement like this as well take five readings you can plot a graph of u and v if you keep the sign convention in mind then this distance is negative and so is this one so you will get a graph in the third quadrant keep both axes u and v say u you take on x and y on minus uh, your v on minus uh, y so in the third quadrant you are working next the two should have the same scale why is that necessary because it will allow you to straight away read off from the graph a location where u and v are equal values that will be your position of 2a or the position of center of curvature and that is twice the focal length so just straight away halving that from the graph you are going to get the value for focal length you can at the same time plot a graph between 1 upon v and 1 upon u the intercepts on the two axes are going to give you the value of 1 upon f reciprocal of that will give you the focal length of the mirror is there another way that you can do that sure by just calculation what formula will you use in the case of mirrors 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v plus 1 upon u and this time remember you must make use of the sign convention so in effect it becomes 1 upon minus v minus 1 upon u calculate that value and you will get the value for focal length report your result by the three methods one from the graph of uv graph the other 1 upon v and 1 upon u graph and your calculated value all these should be the same after all the focal length of the mirror is not going to change but remember if you take less than 5 readings you will not get a graph so it is advisable that you take 5 readings at least are all u values supposed to be between uh, f and 2f so that you get a real image you also get a real image if the object is placed beyond 2f but in that case the image is formed between the vertex and the value for 2f so are we going to bring the image pin somewhere in the middle and try and do the experiment well you will have to do it because the rules of reflection are not going to change and the position where the image is formed is not going to change and therefore the moment you take this object pin this side your image locator pin will be between the mirror and the object pin first few trials will be hard 
but then you can get used to it. What sources of error will be there? One big error is to remove parallax. Most of the time if you don't put this rider, it is very difficult to locate which image are we looking at. So it has to be the identified image of the object that we have selected. So we have to put this little rider paper on top of the object pin which we think is the object pin and the other one is without it. So we locate or we find a point for the image pin where there is no parallax between the image of the object pin and the other image locator pin. So I think it is clear that you take the object pin with the rider, see the inverted image of this one and the second pin and remove parallax. They should be sharp so that you get a very simple, easy parallax correction. So these are some of the ways and uh, that you can make it more accurate, make your experiment worth its while. And what kind of project work can you do with this? You can use different color lights and you can do some more experiments of finding out the focal length of say red color or blue color light. Interesting experiments can be done. You can do and use this apparatus also and change the values of the pin, change the values of this. How will you change the value for the pin and what will you change in the value for pin? You can make it thicker. Like we had a thick crayon, and you can see what, what difference you will get in your result. So you have learned how to find the value for V, for different values of U, for a concave mirror, and use that in three different ways to find the value for focal length of a concave mirror.